a people that want to serve the Lord and a people that want to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. I hey, we've got, uh, I've said it a lot, and uh, others have too, we've gotten a play, to a place in our lives and our church lives that uh, we, we do things a certain way and we think that's the way it's got to be done. But I'll tell you, I, I've said it a lot, my way and God's ways are completely different. And uh, the Bible said that there's a way that seems right to a man. And I, I want to get this clear tonight. Uh, when we do that and we try to do things our way, it's going to end up in death. I, and I'm talking about a spiritual death tonight. Uh, and we all have seen that. We've all been there today. Uh, but I, I don't really know which way the Lord wants me to go this morning. But you, if you've got your Bibles, uh, turn with me to the book of Haggai, uh, chapter number 2. I was here just a few weeks ago. Uh, in chapter number one, and yesterday as I began to study and pray and uh, try to seek God's will uh, in the Word, this is where I kept coming back to. And I, as I said, don't really know what He wants me to bring out of this, but I want to bring out of it what He would have me to. In Haggai chapter number two, I've got one verse, verse number 19. And it said, Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day, will I bless you. And that's all I'm going to read tonight. Uh, today, and I begin to look at that and begin to study. And uh, on that, right, the first part of that verse right there, and he said, Is the seed uh, yet in the barn? And I, I begin to think about the uh, great harvest. And Jesus teaches us that uh, we can look out on the fields and we can see that they're white. And they're ready for harvest. But I, I begin to look at this and, and to think about what Jesus said. And, and no doubt there's a great harvest out there for His people. They, uh, we look out there today, Vernon, we see so many uh, that's lost and undone without God. And they're on their way to a devil's hell. And I, I believe that I, uh, today as we begin to look into this, we need to ask ourselves uh, this same question. Is the seed... Uh, yet in the barn. And what are you talking about, preacher? We know uh, today that as a representation of the uh, uh, seed today, God said that is the Word of God. Yes. That is uh, what the seed is today. And I believe uh, that so many times that we leave that seed uh, put in the barn. As he said, is the seed uh, yet in the barn. Yea, as the, uh, yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth Another, in other words, it's not brought forth. I wonder today if you, uh, and I've thought about it like this, uh, brother, what, maybe we're not seeing the harvest. Uh, maybe we're not seeing the, uh, the harvest that we want to because our seed is still in the barn. And I want you to think about that. Every one of us, hey, it's not everybody here uh, that's a preacher. It's not everybody here uh, that's called to do that. Or, uh, but I, I, everybody here has got a calling in, in your life. And everybody uh, here has got something to do for the Lord. Uh, but I want you to ask yourself, is my seed still in the barn? Have I still got a uh, stacked up in the barn? You go. Uh, we've got several old barns around the farm. Uh, you can go in there and you can walk through them and you can see stuff that's not been used in years and years and years. And I know today, if you've ever been to the barn, you'll see the same things. You'll see stuff. The dust will get on it because it's not being used. Because it's not being uh, properly used. And it's not being uh, used like it once was. Uh, as the writer said, in one place we've hung our heart upon the wheel. As I believe today, it's time uh, that we open up the barn and we start getting out that seed. Amy I used to sing a song. I, I really like it. It's called Sowing Little Seed. Every day that we live, uh, we are sowing some kind of seed today, uh, whether it be good or whether it be bad today. Uh, but I want us to look for just a few minutes on the seeds that we need to be sowing, the seed uh, where we need to go into the barn and we need to get out the seed and we need to uh, get out there and sow them like God has called us to do. I, hey, listen, you say, preacher, I can't do that. I can't sow seed. I want to ask you something today. Uh, has God told you to do something? that you've not done. Has he told you to sing a song and you've not sung it? Has he told you to give a testimony that you've not given? Has he told you to do something that you're just not doing today? I'll tell you if you're dead, if that's the case, then 
and your seed is still in the barn. Yeah. You may have uh, the very seed today uh, that, that it takes to, brother, uh, plant it in somebody's heart uh, that gets them to come to the altar of God and get born again. Amen. Uh, brother, it may be just, uh, listen to me just a few minutes. Uh, God help me. I, I do my best to uh, stand and preach the word of God to you every single servant. Uh, but brother, it may be you uh, that has the key to unlock a servant. It may be you today that's got that seed that somebody needs. But sir, if God tells you to do something, it don't matter how big or how little uh, you may think it is. If you do that, uh, then brother, it'll be a help to somebody. Uh, whether it be just raising your hand, uh, whether it be just saying amen or hallelujah, uh, whatever it may be, if you do what God tells you to do, I'll promise you it'll be for a reason. I'll promise you that uh, God will bless you that I never will forget uh, the old story about the man. It was in a big church down there in Lenore City. I believe it's Lenore City. Uh, First Baptist Church. There was hundreds of people there in that service and about halfway back uh, there was an old man sitting there and he felt like the Lord was telling him, uh, get out in the middle of the aisle and give me ten push up. And he said, Lord, if I do that, people's going to think I'm crazy. If I do that, uh, they're going to run me out of this church. Hell, think I've lost my mind. And he sat back there and he tried to compromise and tried to uh, get out of doing what God had wanted him to do. And he finally said, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Uh, so he stepped out of the aisle. He got down and he done 10 push-ups and never said a word, got up and he went back and sat down in his seat. As soon as he sat down, there was a man uh, come running to that altar and he got saved by God's grace. And he testified at the end of the sermon. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I've, I've struggled my whole life. I've wondered if there is a God. I've wondered if he was really real. And he said, I slipped in the back of the church. And he said, I picked out this man. And I said, Lord, if you're really a God, if you're really God, if you're really real, you have that man. And it give me 10 push up. And I'll believe and I'll, I'll come, Lord. I'll tell you, you may not know why God's doing uh, having you to do something, but if we'll completely uh, trust him, it's for a reason. Don't leave your seat in the morning. And don't leave it there. Uh, brother, I thought about the uh, Jesus begin to tell about different kinds of seed. David, uh, let's go there first. David said, uh, brother, that it was a precious seed. Amen. I'm glad uh, for the precious seed of God. Uh, Zachariah said uh, that it's a prosperous seed. Uh, so brother, if that man had a sat back there that day and, and would have ignored the Spirit of God and would have turned his grief and uh, quenched that spirit, brother, I'll tell you, uh, it would not have been prosperous Amen. that day. If you've got something that's precious. If you're saved by God's grace, you've got something precious Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. I preached the other night about a holy calling. And that's not just talking about preachers. That's talking about when God saved you, He put give you a work to do. And it's holy today. And we are to look at it like it's holy. And we are to look at it like it's precious. And we are to look at it like it's prosperous. Not for us, but for the kingdom of God and for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're to prosper today. Yeah. But then Jesus tells a story about a man. And, and they listen today uh, about a man that's sowing seed. Uh, and some of them went on stony ground. And some of them went by the wayside. Uh, some of them fell among four. Uh, but some of them fell upon good ground. Uh, I'll tell you, we've tried to plow. And uh, we've tried to break up the foul ground right here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. And that's how you get uh, that good soil when it's broken up and uh, it's plowed up uh, the right way. Then we can sow that good seed. Yeah. Now I thought, brother, that good seed is the Word of God. Amen. That's what we've got to sow. And you say, well, preacher, I'm not a, I, I'm not a preacher. I can't sow that. Yes, you can. I, I, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a deacon or a pastor to tell somebody about Jesus and to tell that good news. Brother, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell it everywhere I go. But we've got that good seed. About everybody here 
at some point or another has raised a garden and has done some kind of farm work, raised fires or raised something. And it all starts with that seed. Yeah. It all starts with that seed being planted in the right kind of soil. And I thought about it. There's been many a times I, I've grown stuff all my life. I've, I've lived on farm. I'm just an old farm boy. But when I go to sow, uh, plant corn, I didn't want to get my corn and my beans and my okra mixed up. I didn't want all that coming up in one row. And too many times, my friend, we try to sow mixed seed. Yeah. We'll try to mix it together when we ought to be trying to sow that good seed. What is a mixed seed today, preacher? I, I tell you, if I get up here in myself and I put my thoughts and my, uh, my, my doctrine and my beliefs into this right here, uh, then that's mixing it up. And I don't want to preach nothing uh, to you but the pure, unadulterated uh, word of God today. Peter said, uh, Peter said there was two kind of seeds out there. He said, being born again, not of a corruptible seed. Corruptible meaning wicked and, and something that's going to decay and something that's going to uh, come to naught one day. He said, but of the incorruptible Word of God. Amen. That's what it takes. I, I can get up here and I can preach my thoughts and I can preach uh, my doctrine and I can preach what I believe until I'm blue in the face and it'll never help you get any closer to Christ. It'll never help your lost people come to Christ. But if I sow, if I preach that good word of God, and if I preach it and it's sowed in that good foul ground that's been broken up, I'll tell you it'll do something. Yeah. It'll do something. We've got the we've left the seed in the barn. What's in our barn today? What have we put in there? Have we left our calling in the barn? Have we left our testimony in the barn? Have we left our song in the barn? Have we left our message in the barn? Brother, I'll tell you, somebody's dying and going to hell because of it today. Amen today. We've got to start sowing that right kind of seed. Let's open up that barn this morning and let's get out of that that we put back. and that we Let's go to that willow tree. And let's get our heart down and go to work for our Lord and our Savior. People are dying and going to hell. What's in the barn? I thought about it. Like this, we don't see that great harvest because we're not sowing that great seed. Amen. And God wants to give us a good harvest. I believe that with everything in my heart, Vernon. Yeah. God wants to give us a good harvest. But we must first sow that good seed. Amen. That, that song, it keeps going back to it. It's sowing little seed. Uh, you look at these children and everything that we say to them and everything uh, that we do in front of them, that's sowing a seed. Uh, if you don't believe it, brother, you watch. Uh, uh, Hunter, as we gather around this altar and we start to pray, uh, you watch him go, uh, come and kneel down on this altar. He might, uh, we might not know what he's saying. We might, he might be watching you pray and, uh, and he might even poke you on the hit you on the back or pull on your arm. Uh, but brother, you watch him. And at the end, he'll say amen. And he'll be mumbling the whole time. And I might not understand him, but the Lord does. And what we're doing, Burnham, at that particular time is we're sowing seeds. And whether we realize it, we're, it's our job, we're to teach him. Brian, you're to teach him. He's to be. He's to learn from us men, us aged men, yeah. Yeah. how to worship yeah. our Lord and our Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. John watches us. Emily watches us. Isabella watches us. If men, if these men and uh, Geraldine didn't get that guitar up here and play, you think she had ever brought one in? She probably wouldn't. We're sowing seeds. Let's make sure that we're sowing the right seeds. When somebody comes in this church and they're lost and undone without God and they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're going to go to hell because they've never been saved, we need to be sure that we're sowing the right seeds. What's in our barn? 
that we can sow mixed seed. We didn't even sow rotten seed. You say, and I thought about this a lot. I can take a, a seed, any kind of seed there is in this world, and I can lay it right here on this pulpit and never touch it. And before long, that seed is going to rot. Well, why will it rot, preacher? Because it's not getting the right kind of moisture. It's not getting the right kind of stuff. It's not, it's not planted in the right place. And it's not getting the moisture that it needs. So I, I said that to say this. I can get up here and I can preach till I'm blue in the face. But if it's not I got that moisture of the Holy Spirit, and it's not got that moisture of the power of God, then it ain't going to do nothing. It's just going to rot. Amen. 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 And brother, that's hard for us preachers to hear sometimes. Uh, but I know these times that I've got a, a behind the pulpit and it just ain't been there. And I've tried to carry on and I've tried to preach. And brother, when it's like that, it ain't going to do no good without the Spirit of God. Amen. And I'll tell you, I'm thankful when I can feel His good Spirit. I'm thankful when it's going out over this pulpit and that seed's being sown. And I want us to look for just a minute. And I'm going to try to close. On what are we not sowing? We can sow all day long. And it's going to have an effect on somebody. Whether it's good seed. Whether it's mixed up seed. Whether it's rotten seed. It's going to have an effect on somebody. Yes. But brother I'll tell you. That the most important thing right here tonight. Is we've got seed. That's not being sowed. Right. Unsown seed. And whether you realize it or whether I realize it, that, that has an effect on somebody too. You say, what do you mean, preacher? If I'm not telling somebody about Jesus, if I'm not sowing the right seed in their life, and they go to hell, so I'm going to have to answer for that. Their blood will be required at my hands. They'll be required at your hands if you fail to warn them. So what's in our barn today? Is the seed yet there? Is the seed still there? As I said a while ago, if the Lord tells you to do something, you better do it. I don't care if I'm preaching. I don't care if we're singing. I don't care if we're in the middle of Sunday school. If God tells you to do something, you better do it. It's for a reason today. I'll get out of God's way anytime He wants me to. I, hey, it ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about the Lord and Him having His way. And brother, and reaching lost and dying soul. And if the best way He can reach them is for me to sow my seed uh, sitting there and praying for you, then brother, that's what I want to do. I don't want the seed I've not sown or the seed I've sown to send somebody to hell. Yeah. What's in our barn today? If you're here today and you're not where you need to be with the Lord, I want you to think about this. Everybody here has been here multiple, multiple times. And members and part of our church. But if you're not where you need to be, and I'll tell you, there's been times in my life I've not been where I need to be. There's been times in my life since I've been preaching. I've not been where I need to be, Vernon. And God, uh, God would have to bust up that foul ground of my heart so that good seed could get down in there. And if you're like that today, I, I beg of you, don't go home uh, today not being close to the Lord as you can be. But accept that good seed that He's putting out there today. And uh, uh, Let's open our barn doors and accept what God has for us today. Let's open our heart up and let God get in there and bust up that pot and bust up that, uh, uh, tear up them bars and thistle and stones and put there in that good fertile ground. That good seed. Yeah. That's what I want in my life. That's what I want in your life. You know how we're going to get Pete to see people saved right here at Mount Olive Baptist Church? It's going to come through that good seed. But we can't. We've got to open them barn doors up, up. And we've got to get that seed out of the barn. And we've got to sow it where God wants us to sow it. 
I can go out here, I can take a handful of seeds and I can go walk across the road and I can just throw it out there on that hillside. There ain't much going to come up out there. Every once in a while, uh, you might see something pop up. Uh, 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 brother, I, I tell you, we've got to do it God's way today. Yeah. So what's in our barn? Are you sowing it the way God wants you to? Are you busting up that file of ground? Or are you hiding it in the barn? Is it hanging up back in the in the stall with the dust all over it and cobwebs all over it? I've been there too. I've been there. And as I said, when God begins to plow up your heart and starts putting that good seed in there, there's nothing like it. So if you're in that shape today, I beg of you, please come. If you're here today and you've never been saved, that seed's been sown. You know what to do. You know how to do it. If the Spirit of God's dealing with your heart to do something today, do it. And He'll bless you for it. Get you Everybody stand.